welcome to Face to Facts. I am your host, Nick Face. It's good to see you once again. We have a lot to talk about on this upcoming show about the Patriots, the tanking Red Sox, and so much more. To my left today, we have Tom Smith back. Welcome, Tom, Thank in a Blue Jays hat, which we will get to in just a moment. <laughs> and we have Phil Haley back. Hey. How are you doing, Phil? I'm doing all right, Blue Jays underwear. <laughs> oh, we're going to expose that much on the opening of this no, show, no, huh? Wow. Know, know. Well, Anyways. Oh well, you know how this show's going to go now. <laughs> Click. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk Patriots first. The Patriots deserve to be talked about first. What a heck of a game they had on opening night. Raising that banner with a score of, was it 30 to 3? 30, 30, 30, 30, 33 to 3. 33 to 3. I always say 33, but 33. 33. Came out firing on all cylinders, and it just shows you how much depth this team has with even some players that were still missing. So I want to talk about that first. If anybody would like to kick it off with a opening remark on what you thought and what was, what kind of, uh, what, when you saw the game and everything, what was your overall impression? Uh... Given how it, the season started last year, I was I was fairly surprised, um, especially uh, since they were missing a key piece from their defense. Kyle Van Noy. Um, and for anybody that follows his wife on Instagram like I do, they would have known that he was out because she was expecting Some a baby. people got mad that he was missing a game because his child was being born. Some like, were really... Get out of your rock. Are you like, kidding me? <laughs> wait, what? Really? Yeah. Oh, that, that's, that's a disgrace. He's a professional football player. Yeah, yeah, he should yeah. be out there. Are you kidding me? All professional, You're kidding me, all right? All professional players miss a, a sports game, a game yeah. that they're supposed to be playing in because... I think if you don't miss, yeah, yeah. first of all, that sets your whole marriage up for failure in your life. Well, yeah. But second of all, it's your child. Yeah. That, that's how children get named obesity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna go back to that show, huh? Oh, no. Okay. Well, they don't. They also don't do that to accountants. It's just like Bob. Well, you can't. You gotta finish the spreadsheet. My, uh, April fifteenth. You are not allowed to have yeah. birth. But um. Uh, no, but that's. Oh, go on. Finish your. Um, and then on the other side, you know, um, David Andrews missing was. Uh, so to see all how they all all did interchangeable parts. Mm -hmm. Next man up mentality but was that, um, on full, but that full throttle, I would good, say, for that opening That shows night. you how good of a coach Bill Belichick is. And Dante Skarnecchia. And Dante Skarnecchia. Uh, and on the O-line conversation, I'll bring that thread over here, Isaiah Wynn. Yes. Like, how crazy game. was yep. he on the blind side? Stay healthy, please, <laughs> Mr. Wynn. <laughs> yeah. But that, uh, and I agree with Tom, just, and uh, what you said to Nick, they kind of came on, on all cylinders, but I would like to thank the Pittsburgh Steelers for botching another series of plays in the goal uh, on goal line and also for Dante Moncrief for not catching anything when he clearly should have caught at least two or three well, balls I mean if you're sitting there as a Steelers fan you're thinking okay we're facing the Patriots yeah. and we're this <laughs> we're most I mean if I was a Steelers fan I'd say okay we're most likely going to lose because who do we really have now we lost Antonio Brown mm -hmm. because we didn't no want to be on Bell <laughs> yeah. no levy on Bell your top receiver is Juju Smith-Schuster, who, honestly, yeah, he was a great receiver last year. Not a number one. He really shouldn't be a number one. Yeah. Um, Jesse James is no longer there. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's yeah. with the Giants. Who's he with? He is with the uh, Lions. Oh, oh, weird. Lions, I think. He's pretty good, yeah. too. I forget who it is. But, yeah. yeah. But they, they, were have, missing, yeah. they were missing a lot of... Speaking of missing key players, they were missing a lot of a lot of key yeah. players that helped them out last year. Offensively, yeah. On the Patriot side of things, what stood out to you the most? What was the most pleasant surprise or the biggest pleasant surprise of the game? I don't know. Isaiah Wynn still was like, oh, wow. I'll tell you what it is. Uh, oh, oh, well, tell me what I I'll think. I'll tell you what it is because <laughs> this is high up on my thing. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Brown. Josh, I mean, oh, Josh Gordon. Gordon. Josh Gordon, Gordon yeah. excuse me. No. Yep. If he's able to have somewhat of a, of a game – Day in and day out, like he did from Sunday. He looked yeah. like a, this team's got some, a lot of he, weapons he right now. Like we'll totally, get into the other person in a second. He but. looked like a totally different player. Yeah. In that game, he's from had last year. he had a wonderful, great touchdown. But you also got to look at Philip Dorsett too. Yeah. Here's a person that Tom Brady has put high above his chain of trust, and they made a decision on is it going to be Demarius Thomas or Philip Dorsett? I mean, I, I think they made the right decision. Yep. Because they ended up trading Demarius Thomas earlier this week to the Jets. Oh, yep. did they? Yep. And I just, again, it, it's one of those things where I'm sure 
Demarius Thomas is like, oh, great, i got to go play for this team. Well, but well I mean, for, first he signed. He signed but he was a healthy scratch, basically, for the game one. Yeah, he he signs with the Patriots, then he's questionable for the – question. Uh, then then they cut him, then they sign him again. For yeah. less money, then he's, yeah. then he's questionable for the game. And then, then he gets traded. It's like, I feel what? Bad for the guy. Yeah, hey, if hey, I was the mayor's yeah. Thomas, I'd be like, should I really continue playing this game? Should I buy a house? What should I do? Yeah. Like, should I stay with Tom? Yeah, exactly. Should I not? Yeah. No. So, uh, um, the other, the other positive thing that I, I liked from just everything in general was Tom Brady as well. Here's a guy, 42 years old. You know, yeah. we hear it all the time. When's he done? What's going to happen? He looked like he was in his prime during that whole game. He, really he was well protected. Um, it's going to be a little bit of work with um, Ted Karras as, as your center. He was not super sharp. I will oh, say yeah, that. He, he lobbed it, it a shaked. couple times. It was yeah. shaky. Uh, but I think that, that over time, work, hard work will pay off in that. But Brady Brady looked mid-season form, definitely, on, on, on that game. No question about yeah. it. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to bring it up now because I know it's a sore, sore subject, and we're going to talk about it later. But he he looked like uh, like a player should at the beginning of the season. Yes, definitely does. I'm like not too uh, shaky. I'm no. like I'm like other teams. Plenty of confidence can deliver what he's got to do. Yeah, yeah. Now well, Van Noy, like we mentioned, was out on the on the, on the defense. And the defense still. The defense still was my stud of the game. Pretty good. Yeah. Oh, the Patriots okay. have, in my opinion, right now. At least top five defense in the NFL. Yeah. At least easily, easily. And I and I'm and I'm bare minimum. Bare minimum. I'm saying is, is a five spot. They could have the best defense in the league. Yeah, we'll see by the end of the season. I mean, they they look real, the defense looked uh, a lot better than they have in recent. The years. other the, yeah. one of the big guys that really stood out to me on the, on the defense was definitely Dante Hightower. His performance yeah. he had for that game was pretty outstanding. And I also liked what Jamie Collins yeah, did too. He, had a, he had a wonderful game. Michael Bennett was actually really Michael good. Michael Bennett was great. A lot of pressure and your your right um, safeties and your and your the, um, cornerbacks were excellent. The cornerbacks were amazing in that. Like they have so much depth and talent, and that speaks volumes to how how much the Patriots going to separate themselves from the pack. Now, upcoming for Week Two, the Patriots have the Miami Dolphins, and in no, Miami, you cannot yeah. take any opponent lightly, but. Any score prediction that you're expecting here? Because they lost 51 to 10, I think. 56 last... to 10, 56 and they're romping to 10. by the Ravens. Okay. Yeah. What what what's the uh, what's the thoughts on this? I think they're gonna put it. I think the Patriots are gonna put up another at least 30 point spot. My key things in this game is to stay healthy. Do not get players hurt. I'd even consider play a Brady a half and then give. Uh, Stidman the second half because I just don't think there's any way that this team could even lose the game if Stidman is is your quarterback. I don't. Yeah. I mean, with the with the players that Brady <laughs> would never want to do that, but I'm just no. saying. Oh, but if you look at the receivers that you're given, I mean, it's yeah. a, it's a given. If you can at least like get the pat the ball there, they they can basically even, catch it. And what also like we didn't talk about the running backs. Like, uh, I mean, their running game wasn't. Crazy. Wasn't strong, but, but no. like their pass, like the you know what will game. come out in another week or two. This could be a very run heavy week. Oh, well, there you go. Michelle gets the carries. Well, I thought and it was going to be a run heavy game at the start of the uh, Steelers game because you, he Brady throws a pass at them, and all of a sudden they're doing like three straight running plays. Right, but Steelers were ready for it. They were. But also like Burkhead, like catching a lot of passes on Burkhead. Had a nice game. Burkhead yes, had thank a nice Thank you for mentioning game. his name. Yep. And I mean, you, we can't forget that Elman caught his 500th career pass. Oh, wow. Yeah, he had a great game. Like, we don't talk, he, cra- he caught 11 balls. Or he, like, it was 11, right? Yeah. It was something like yeah. that. Yeah. It was crazy. So he had a big game. Yeah. Leader on the field. That's what he is. But it does Move the chains. But what? I look at Edelman out. as you move the chain yeah. players. Third down and 10, boom, hit him. But I mean, need, need, need Edelman or Brown, uh, White rather, yeah. Brady will you, stand you right back and get them. You look at this team coming into this week. Uh, any quarterback that's behind that offensive line has so many weapons to go to. You have Michelle, you have White, you have Burkhead, you have Devlin. I mean, you can't forget yeah. about Devlin. That Devlin, Devlin's still there. And he was lining up. <laughs> Devlin's and still there. You really don't have a tight end. No, no, you don't, no. You don't have a tight end. Oh, but you have you have Josh Gordon, you have Julian Edelman, and then you have the newest addition to the team. Good transition. Mm-hmm. So, we found out Saturday night. I was at dinner. We all heard about the whole saga last week with the, uh, Antonio Brown 
um, just not wanting to play for the Raiders, basically, and just making yeah. himself look like an absolute clown. My opinion on the matter was he's a clown, and good, good luck to the Raiders. But then reports started coming out saying that the behavior and the antics were getting too much for the Raiders. He had that Instagram video that was shared on, on Antonio Brown's personal account with him and John Gruden with about Gruden saying, you know, enough's enough. Like, are you going to play football here or are you not? Clearly he wanted an out, and then we found out on Saturday that the Raiders were releasing him. Well, it only took a couple hours, and then breaking news you, you hear is that Antonio Brown gets signed by the Patriots, and everybody's like, hmm, I expected that. Yeah, well, I mean, we did and we didn't, right? We did we didn't. Well, right? I, I mean, mean, if we... We did know that the Patriots were interested in him yeah. back in March when the Steelers were looking to trade. And that we was, did know that. That was when we talked about if we, would ra if the, if we were GMs of the Patriots, if we would rather OBJ or Antonio Brown. Oh, yeah. That got that discussion going. And if I believe remember. I chose Antonio Brown. I, cho I know I chose Antonio Brown. Because I've never been an Odell Beckham fan. Never. And, and you have been. I know. Oh, yeah. Of course. You have been. I, well, I, think I, don't know. I chose Brown. Why would you be a fan of him, especially after this record. weekend? Well, if yeah. you want to go to our YouTube channel where the NorCam is and you want to go back into the archive yeah. and look at Just, what the episodes have said, we have said on record, at least I know I have and Tom has, that we would be for Antonio Brown being here. We know that comes with baggage. Yeah, cool. Every diva has its own baggage. Randy Moss had his baggage. Mm -hmm. um, you could even go back to uh, way back in the day for the Patriots with Corey Dillon, Albert mm -hmm. Hainsworth. They yeah. all have mm -hmm. their baggage. Ocho Cinco. Dante Stallworth. Yeah. Yes, they all have their baggage. But is it worth taking it on? Is it a risk? Yes, folks. It it's a risk worth taking in my eyes. Antonio Brown has been, if not the best, top three wide receivers in football for the past five straight years. And Give him a chance. If you're Bill Belichick, I mean, it, it's, it's an easy decision. Now, I also want to put it on record here, too, that, yes, Antonio Brown has been accused of some very disturbing allegations. I am not saying, I'm sure Tom wouldn't, and I'm sure Phil wouldn't say, because we're supporting a player like that, that means that we don't understand uh, – the, the sort of allegations that are um, that, that, that are coming. Sure, yeah. That is not our stance that we are taking. If it comes out and those things are factual and he should be going to jail for those certain things, I mean, that's a completely different matter. But the day and age that we live in, I want to make sure that I come out and tell our audience here that you're proven innocent, innocent until proven guilty. If you are proven guilty from the things that you have done, I do not support you. But right now, if the Patriots are supporting this player and giving him every chance that they can, then I'm going to stand with the Patriots. And he was practicing today. You can have a different matter but opinion on that, too. I, I, it's a tricky situation I mean, to I be don't, involved I don't, in. I mean, I, might, I could get attacked for saying this, but honestly, like the, it, if you look at it, and if this, true, this situation truly it's happened. It's a touchy-feely kind of subject. If it truly happened, but if you look at it, he signs with the Patriots when? Saturday. Saturday. Yep. The allegations came out Monday? Monday. Or he, he agreed to a contract with the Patriots Saturday, signed, signed Monday, and all of a sudden these allegations come out? It smells like a rat. I think there was a civil suit beforehand. Yes, there was. There was a civil suit that the Raiders knew about as well. No, I have a couple of sure sources within the yeah. Patriots that the Patriots were aware yeah, sure of what was were. going on yeah. with this before that contract was signed. I think if they weren't, he would have been released yesterday yeah. or the day when that all, all the story came out about all the allegations against Brown. It's all That's just how I'm, yeah. I, 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 I'm processing the it's, whole thing. It's all unfortunate, no matter how you slice it, it's unfortunate. And you hope that uh, none of your uh, players on your team are capable of such heinous things. But, you know, here we are, another weird NFL. But yeah. the stuff comes out the day he signs... No, the they're, they're, with the they're surely, I, it, it's just it's just it, something it, that it's sensationalism. What do you want? I mean, we should the fa as fans we should know about it, but honestly, the the timing of the how it came out was yeah. just ridiculous. No, they're gonna because it's like I said, sensationalism, and it's they're covering a story where a a player who's all he wants to be in the spotlight so badly. Oh, so yes. I mean, this is he he, much, he he thrives in that. Yeah, and this is what you know you get, and you know you get what you get. 
as far as like, you know, it's well, almost like a Twilight Zone speaking episode. Speaking of like in, enjoying being in the spotlight, look at Odell Beckham Jr. Look at what happened this weekend. <laughs> Everybody's what? talking about it. Oh. Quarter of a million dollar watch on his wrist at oh, the game. Oh, yeah, that thing. I forgot about it was that. so weird. That's right. So but he decided to, to put a watch from... on because he's bigger than the game. Here's the difference. Here's the thing that. I hope you're not equating. O no, here's Odell the thing Beckham. that gets under my skin here a little watch bit. Watch crime. If you're a professional athlete, I'm just saying it. Mm -hmm. If I was in, in, the, in a certain situation and be lucky enough to be somebody like a Brady or an Odell, something like that, wouldn't you go about your business in the best way that you can? You would why, you, why would you, for any chance, put your career in jeopardy, put your life in jeopardy sometime or, or somehow, and, and do things that are just absolutely unacceptable, outrageous, and give make yourself you know, you know, not look the best way that you can in the in the public spotlight. Well, I mean, a quarter that, that's million what, that's what just quarter million dollar watch makes you look pretty good, though. <laughs> oh, which are we talking about? Either or? Like, what the hell is his problem? <laughs> well, wait, who a, are we talking? Are we it's a football game, and you got a two hundred fifty thousand dollar watch on. Oh, I was just all right. Like, are you <laughs> kidding me? We're... Okay, I don't know where. We are you kidding me? I wish somebody ripped it off his thing and threw it into the stands. I mean, they might have. What a dumb, you know what? He probably thought it was going to make him, make help them win the game. Like, who does he think he is? Well, Seriously, you know, he thinks he's OBJ. Really, yeah. He thinks he's OBJ. <laughs> well, I think they need their heads examined. Well, much like Antonio Brown. And I'll agree, he needs his head examined. Oh, sure. Too. No, they think they're gods in a lot of ways. And there in a lot you go. of ways, they're treated like it, and they're kind of bred to be these people who feel like nothing else. No, there are no real repercussions for them, and they're uh, they're kind of coddled in a way where. I can do, you know, look what happened with Tony Brown. He went through this whole rigmarole of uh, literally hopping from team from the Steelers to Oakland, uh, being a complete jackass, mm -hmm. and then like, oh, but the Patriots just sw uh, like swept him off his feet and brought him in, and they're calling Treated him Treated like royalty. Yeah, I mean, well, that's... because... Bring out the Tom, red carpet. Tom Brady's the one true God, Phil. Come on now. <laughs> sure. Tom Brady <laughs> threw out follow. the red carpet for him. He's, he's sleeping with him at home or yeah, whatever. I mean, I think he just... If you look at... Uh, sure, Giselle has something to say about yeah, that, but that's he... another story for another show. Another so. player. And yeah, that just... That Tom. My Giselle Tom. impression. But, yeah. Jim Gray's got something oh, the, to say about that. Yeah, that Love good. those interviews. Not not to throw it off topic here. Actually, the Murray. Tom, Tom, yes, yes. Tom, Tom Brady does that Westwood one on uh, radio the, uh, for uh, Monday Night Football, that interview with Jim Gray. Yeah. Oh, he is such a gerbil. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Tom. Tom. <laughs> but. Tom. What I do you think, think about Antonio? Tom. I don't think he cares What's for Giselle it. What's Giselle think? Tom. I don't think he cares for it. If you look no, at. No, I don't think he does. No. I mean, he's paid to do it. Of but course. And I'm sure the he guys are, The guy's a Muppet. He really is. Oh, sure. He's puppet, just Muppet. A, he's just yeah. a Jim Henson Muppet wannabe. Someone's pulling the strings or have a hand in a certain place. But the whole uh, point is, uh, yeah, you look at those tapes. Look at those interviews of uh, when asked on the field after the opening night game. You can see it in his eyes. You can see a whole bit of like, oh, well, you know, we're going to work him in. We're going to see what we can Sam. do. Yeah. And Jim Gray just kind of coming yeah. and creeping up along. Hello. Yeah. But um, uh, Murray on 98.5 oh, hits, hits, hits the spot on that. I, I, I could laugh all day on that stuff that he does it. Um, and just some bits about, yeah. But much being like those are, those are, that's the situation that we're yeah. at here with the Antonio Brown. I like the move. Of course, if, if something it comes out that the, these allegations are true on it, Yes, the Patriots will be moving on from it. I will be moving on from it as well. It's not but like I think, they really I think it's them. a I think it's a nice yeah. risk worth taking uh, because it adds another weapon to the uh, you know to the, the to, arsenal to the arsenal yeah. that Brady has. But I mean, I mean, if you look at the, if you look at tape from the game on the first game, I mean, it doesn't you don't really need them. But it's nice to have. It's nice yeah. to have nice things, you know. Embarrassment of riches. Yeah. I know Brady's very appreciative of having those nice things with everything. So. Looking ahead to what could be coming for the Patriots for week two, um, you insert Antonio Brown into this lineup here uh, for receiving stuff. Obviously, you really, don't, you really can't double-team anybody. So with Brown being another weapon for, for Brady, where do we think the production is going to come from? Do you think that Brown's going to have that uptick, or is Edelman going to be more open, or is, who, who's it going to be? That's I, what I keep trying to determine, and it's like I, I obviously think, the Patriots will give that ball to the most open person. I feel. I mean, Adelman's always open, no matter what. He always finds a way to get open. Yeah. I think defenses are going to forget about Philip Dorsett, and he's going to be. This could be a money clear. year for him. He's mm -hmm. going to be clear in the zone to make 
great catches, get big yards. Um, I also think, you know, when Rex Burke is there, he's going to be open a lot of the time. James White's going to be open. James I mean. White. Well, I mean, James White is like Edelman. He's, he gets open he no matter get, what. Yeah. Nobody likes to say anything, yeah. that it could be a perfect season or what here, but oh, I'd love re- to say it. realistically, yeah. does this team have that opportunity to go 19-0? I mean, realistically. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, make a comment. Or anything, but I did say yeah, that. I did say that, you know, the last show. Um, you think it's realistic? I, I mean, it's the schedule's it's weak. We know in, that it's not impossible, but it is the hardest league to do so. Who is the biggest competition right now for the Pats? It, I feel it's the Patriots and then a bunch of other people. I think the Rams. You still think, think the Rams think have the a Rams, sh- okay? I think Philly. Okay. Uh, possibly Tennessee. Yeah, they they um, ramshackled one of the other teams. Yeah, no, yeah, they. Who uh, did they play this past uh, week? Oh, it was uh, Cleveland. 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 Thank Cleveland. you. <laughs> and everyone's oh, Cleveland. Here we go. <laughs> Cleveland's gonna have a winning season. No, and I fell into. You a, live a, in uh, Cleveland. Oh, Your no. team's in Cleveland. You're horrible. But I mean, Next to be point. to be fair. Uh, Sorry. No, but the I have a hatred Titans. of Cleveland. I think no, because Delaney of LeBron. Walker had a great LeBron. quote about yeah. it. Yeah. I oh. think I think Dallas is gonna be the toughest opponent on the schedule this year. Oh, that's a good one. You actually. believe in Dallas? I th- you believe in Dallas? I mean, if you look at, if you look at the game, the miracles. I mean, I know it was against the Giants, but if you look at if you look they at what they well, did, though. they played really well considering yeah. how they've done in the. Playoffs. I I will say that from what I saw from that game, which was basically some highlights, they did look very good. What I did like, and this was a classy move on their end, is the first touchdown of the season went to Jason Witten. Yeah, that, that was nice. classy. He came out of retirement this year to play again. Yeah, because I thought he, I, that's he was I broadcasting was last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing um, the broadcast on the Amazon um, something. Oh, Amazon like feed for Thursday okay. night football. But it's nice to see. I don't yeah. have any bad bad feelings or will with the Jason Witten there. What I don't like is Ezekiel Elliott, and I'm not the biggest of fans of Dak Prescott. I do feel is it because of the? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Ezekiel Elliott. He's another wannabe diva. I mean, is he a diva or is he a wannabe diva? A wannabe diva. Right. He, wannabe. Not even a diva yet? No, he's I, a wannabe. I think right. after this year, he's going to add two more piercings to his collection. How See, I'm not, big, I'm not big on the running backs, and here's yeah. why. I think we're spoiled with it with obviously Brady being there as our quarterback and all, but I feel any given running back who has talent can run, can run the football in a given system. I think if you inserted Elliott to whatever kind of team it's going to be, it, it, you know, it is what it is. All right. That's my thought on no, it. No, sure. Running backs die out very quickly in the NFL. Yeah, because they get hit every... Uh, they do. I mean, I guess that in all players Yes, and I hit, agree. But... It, you know, it's it's a ground and pound kind of sport, but that's just my stance on the running back. It's, okay, you're not going to sign next year? Fine. Next person in. They'll do the good job, too. So are we playing Dallas in Dallas, or... Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That'll it be It is the weekend before Thanksgiving. Uh, that should yeah. be the 24th. Which we were talking about because it's a late Thanksgiving. Yes, we are. Yeah. I, yeah, can't, I can't... I can't really good. I, do they play them in Dallas and then? I think the game is actually in. F- I think the game's at Foxborough, Foxborough and then okay. I think they go to Houston the next week. Now Houston could be a tough one too. Uh, I mean, Bill O'Brien, I think, is going to be. Fu- f- yeah. Is it fumbling? Bye bye. Yeah. Oh really? Bye bye. Yeah. Same with Matt Patricia. Bye bye. I don't know. Well, you never know. Same by with Brian time? Flores from the Miami. Bye bye. You never know. They might be out of a job quickly. So, really? Yeah. Well, you think Patricia will be out of a job? Absolutely. Patricia right. will yeah. get picked up again by Billy. Yeah. yeah. If needed. If needed. I, don't I think, like yeah. Jared Mayo as your I defensive think coordinator. That's awesome. I, think I think that's a that's wonderful great. move. I think I, think, I was very excited I think about he that. will surprise a lot of people this year. And yeah. then they got Steve Belichick, yeah, Belichick's son, son right there, too. So they're kind of sharing the play calling yeah. and, and, the, and, and the, you know, the calls and what they'd like to do there. So I, I like the move. I like the move there. Um, anything else you'd like to talk about with the NFL? Well, so what are your thoughts on uh, perfect season? I just, I don't, I, who cares, honestly? Yeah. If you can win the Super Bowl and go eight, uh, sorry, 16 and three, yeah. great for the entire, it's 19 games you basically get if you get to the Super Bowl. But, you know, a 14 and two regular season and go perfect in the playoffs, that's realistic. Um, I always, you know, Miami's one of those. The Bills are one of those that's, you know, win one, lose one kind of thing. I do think that this team altogether, and this is a very bold statement, and it's after the first game of the season, but I think I'll make it. 
both sides of the ball, offense, defense, special teams, and, you know, coaching and all that stuff. This could be the best Patriots team ever. Could oh, be. Wow. Could be. Because Antonio Brown pretty much equals Randy Moss in my eyes. Equals any deep threat that yep. the Patriots have. Equals it. Edelman, you could say, is better than Welker. Yes. And Dante Solworth could, I mean, Josh Gordon is better than Dante Solworth. Yes. And most of your defense, I mean, you had an overlap from, like, the original dynasty. Yep. Um, but, you know, you have a good core here. And as far something, as, yeah. something I was looking at, and I'm, I'm big on patterns and statistics with stuff, but the Patriots' first Super Bowl was 2001. Didn't win in 2002. Won in 2003. Won in 2004. Won the Super Bowl in 2014. Won it in 2016, correct? Mm -hmm. We won it in 2018. We had one that was kind of uncommon, which was mm -hmm. your 2014. But this could be that win, and win after that Super Bowl again. Oh, no, it could be. Back could be back to back. Uh, could when, be back to back. The pattern that you see is... Four five years, or yeah. six years, four yeah. and six or something? Yeah, that could be the pattern. I wouldn't be surprised if they went on the The other question I have to ask yeah, is I kinda, how... I'm switching my 11 and 5. If you were not a Patriots fan, <laughs> like, if you were not a Patriots I really fan, am. Yeah. how much do you think the rest of the U.S. and world hates our guts right oh, now? Oh, uh, undeniably. Why wouldn't you? That's like so easy. Well, like, my... We're such an easy villain, especially with Antonio Brown. Joining my my way of put my way of putting it, and you know, for everybody for everybody's imagination, so that way they can all soak it in, is that once you know you, you have um, you lose Gronk, and you know pro the entire NFL is probably laughing at us now because they're like, oh, and they don't have Gronk. December first, Gronk will be back <laughs> oh, on that no. field, folks. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I I, do, they, talking. do they do they do they need him? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. Um, Come play. Gronk play football. And then, and mm. then uh, Josh Gordon gets reinstated, and, like, and everybody's probably like, oh, no. Now they, have a, mm. now they have a threat. And then Antonio Brown gets, <laughs> gets signed, yeah. and it's the home yeah. alone where he puts the, after, <laughs> the aftershave <laughs> on yeah. his face. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. No, it, yeah. Well, the wet bandits are coming to get them. Run, yeah. Not happening. Yeah, who are the wet bandits in this situation? Maybe Every single one Goodell? of the NFL teams. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> They're the wet bandits. No, and I think... You're all going to jail. Don't you think world, fans worldwide are like, ugh, come on. Come well, on, it's probably man. how they look at like the NBA with like the Golden State Warriors and all that and, stuff, too. Yeah, it's it's I probably the same kind I of... I kind of love the Golden State Warriors. It's yeah, kind I'm of the same guy. example. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. great. <laughs> but so. no, as a fan... But, I, but this brings up a good point. Like, I'm a fan of good basketball. Yep. And, and like the Spurs, like... Uh, and even the Bulls before them and the Celtics and Lakers, they played good basketball. There are very few teams that like win in, that, in the NBA that don't know how to play. Yeah. And much like the NFL, you can kind of like, you can squeak by-ish, because, you know, every other Sunday. But, I mean, if you're a football fan, you're living in a time where, you know, how many times are you going to see Tom Brady in this, the Tom Brady Bowl, mm. as we can call it now, yep. for the past, like, 20 years? It's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that... I yeah, do want to no, change... I mean, our I understand what lovely is, subject but, yeah. because we need to talk about a team that <laughs> should be out on a golf course right now instead of even showing up to a well, baseball they field. They basically yeah, are. I think right? we've yeah. known. I think we've known for a while that their season is done, but I want to compare yeah. this with a couple things. Um, what I've seen in the past week is disgraceful, embarrassing baseball. You still remotely had a chance, okay? You still remotely. Granted, it's like a 1% chance of, of winning and everything. Your baseball team, folks, here in Boston, cannot beat the Blue Jays right now. Cannot or doesn't feel cannot, like trying? Cannot, will yeah. not, moving on from everything. I couldn't be more disappointed after a World Series championship, and I'm sorry if I sound like a spoiled, rotten Red Sox fan. We kind of do. But you know us. what? This team, when it was put together this year again, bare minimum, bare minimum, should have been in the playoffs. And they're not. This team won 119 games this season, and they may barely win 85 games this year. That is deplorable. Deplorable. And I am going on a massive rant about it because it starts from the ownership. The ownership after the Patriots game fired Dave Dombrowski at 12 o'clock in the morning. 12 o'clock as their damn scapegoat the next day. 
They elect to not do a press conference. They sent out their lame duck manager, Alex Cora, to answer all the damn questions about why he's gone, what's happened with this season. Crickets from there. And they all were in town, upstairs in their office. Shameful. Sell the damn team. My point. Go ahead. I don't, know, I don't know how I could follow that. No, no, I mean, he obviously doesn't have any anger issues regarding <laughs> me. No, no. no, I mean, he's got, he's got it all laid out. I hope any, uh, any therapists out there know any good <laughs> anger management classes because that, you're that, probably that's watching That's called this. passion, folks. Pro yeah, that's passion. Passion for murder. Murder is team, the next. A, a team, yeah, we're, we're, uh, that's called passion for something that you've loved your entire life. And when you see certain individuals not give a crap still get paid to go out and produce the way that they're doing should be instantly fired. That's why I hate these long-term contracts in baseball. I hate them. So, Worse than any sport there is. I hate them. So Go ahead. Um, yeah, that kind of brings me to one of my points. Um, but, I mean, I'm not surprised that Dombrowski got fired. Um, the timing of it, was it great? No. Was it handled the best way possible? No. Was it the right move? One of them, yes. Um, but, I mean, you look at the team, because I know some people are complaining, like, well, why, why, you know, why did they fire, you know, Dave? He's doing a great job. Well, the truth is, he really, he really isn't. You got all these starting pitchers in their mid-30s. Careers are probably going to end pretty soon. And you have no pitching in your farm system. You have nobody that can come out of the bullpen to be starters. Mm -hmm. And then you go and play the Blue Jays, one of the worst teams in the major leagues. And it doesn't even look like you're trying. Doesn't look like they're even trying. They're not trying. I mean, I think the message was sent yes. as soon as like some Browns, like he's fired. Oh, all right, well, I don't know. Our season's name. over. Personally, I did. I, mean, I think, I think, the, I think that, the message was sent that. at the deadline when nothing oh, not was brought in. Yeah. Yeah. And That's know, when the clear message was there. I know some there. players weren't happy about it. Yep. No, and yep. you, could I do see, too. you could see at the deadline end, even like you could say like a couple weeks ago, they still were trying to uh, scrape together some games. But, yeah, I don't, you didn't have any bullpen help. You didn't like, have any didn't starter have help. Closer. No. no starter help. Yep. I mean, you had some offense. What you really needed was someone to help preserve a lead have a lot that's of like, injuries and you have yeah. you have nothing you, yeah. you, you got nothing but that's what he did that was his track record throughout his whole career let's look at Dombrowski here for a second Dombrowski, because yeah. when Dombrowski was brought in in 2015 we did our show I said I was all for it I think you did at that point and I think we knew the we knew the background we knew what was coming to the table it was a guy that made big moves signed big players pretty much destroyed a farm system that was done. But you do not get to that 2018 World Series championship without the moves that were made in my eyes. But he did get he did get rid of a lot of players that he didn't need to get rid of. Or a lot of prospects. I think he I gave up way too players. many many prospects for Craig Kimbrell from the Padres, if you want to look at that move right there. Um, the Chris Sale move. Do you win 2018s and have a successful season without Chris Sale? So you parted with his name was Anthony Ronaldo, uh, and then oh. you parted with, um, with Juan Mancata. Chicago, with yep. the Cubs. Yeah. Yep. I would do that move anytime I could. The big things that you want to look at on why this team is at the spot they are is their financial troubles, I think. More so than the trades. Well, it's their financial troubles and their extensions that they made with certain players. So I don't necessarily blame Dombrowski for everything. Was it justified to fire him? Yeah, because he's not the right person for the future. The way it was done here was wrong. He should have stayed at least till the end of the season. Yeah, I don't get that. I never Why get was that. it done so soon? I feel that Dombrowski went to management and says, what's it going to be? What's the decision? Oh, okay. So I think he put his foot down on that, and that's when the Red Sox pulled the plug and said, you're done. I mean, even then, be like, hey, you know, give us a, a week. A bad look. That's the yeah. big thing is no matter what it is with this Red Sox ownership, People who leave always leave on a bad note. Francona. Um, who was another one that left on a bad note? Theo Epstein. Yeah. Um, John Farrell left on a bad note. Um, ben Sherrington left on a bad note. 
Oh, I forgot about Ben Charrington. All these really. moves that they make just look John Lester's botch signing. Yeah. They're all they're all bad looks of your organization. Do you think you can avoid that? Do you think like that's specific uh, or I don't specific think you can. to? I don't think you can avoid that in, in general. Like if John any, Henry and Tom Warner are no longer here, then you then you, then you can avoid sounds it. Sounds like yeah. Nick wants to buy the team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's scrape together some bucks. Yeah. Let's do it. I'll go pick up the pennies out in the Twenty fifty. Yeah. yeah. Go is, there a wishing, is there a wishing well there's in North a, Reading? There's a fountain in the middle of oh, North Reading. Okay. Excellent. Nickel and dimes. But oh. that that's my stance on the whole thing with with Dombrowski. Now let's look at the positives that were there. Again, positive was getting Sale, getting Avaldi. That I think his best move was. Trading for Evaldi because Evaldi was that great postseason hero that you needed for 2018. Steve Pierce move was also huge. So his trade deadline acquisitions last year were awesome. That set the team up to explode in the postseason. Outside of that, then you have contract extensions. What is the worst contract extension that he did so far? Well, that was made. You can put Chris Sales out there on the Price, table. Maybe? You can say the David Price signing. You can well, say the Evaldi signing. You can say the Pierce signing. You can say the Nunez uh, re up on his contract. I mean, I don't think. I mean, we I, don't, I think. With I Pierce, think. I don't think you can give him. I think the that. worst. I think the worst re signing would, would be either the Chris Sale or the Nathan Evaldi. What would you go with? I might go with Sale and that. Because of like his age, and just because he broke down, like he, I mean, literally broke down that season before, like, and I think the season, like they'd had him for a year or two, or yep. they only had him for a year at that point. Here's, it's the Was, most surprising even, piece of information in, it blur in my eyes. Yeah. It's the most surprising information in my eyes that's come out this year about the Red Sox. Outside of games lost, games won, the most surprising bit of information was this stupid Chris Sale extension, five years, hundred. Fifty, hundred forty-five million dollars. And he would be how old at the end of that extension? Thirty-six, I think. It's not the worst, I guess, but it's still not. Uh, how can you sign him though yeah. without him proving that he can stay healthy? This guy, over his career, dominant, yes, constantly breaks down. His August and September, he barely pitches, or if he does pitch, it's horrible. I don't get how you can't look at the medicals and understand that. This is a guy that needs to prove that he can go out and pitch before that do. big deal is made, which smells to me, this is why I don't see this as a Dombrowski problem. I think John Henry stuck his nose into this because yeah. he didn't want to botch the signing like he did with John Lester. I think it all smells, uh, comes down to that. No, I think, I think you're right. Like it smells same, fishy. Same goes Something for the smells one. fishy with it. Same goes for the Evoli one, too. You know the guy. Yeah. I blame Dombrowski fully for that. Oh, all right. And the reason I blame him fully for that is you need to look at your evidence from how you've won things in the past. You catch lightning in a bottle, all these different points in the year. 2004, the Red Sox won their first World Series. Did we re-sign Pedro? Did we re-sign Derek Lowe? We did not. No, no, that's right. They walked. Could yeah, they have true. probably signed one of them? Probably would have been a good idea. Mm -hmm. But Pedro broke down after that. He went to the Mets and started getting hurt. Well, he was, Derek Loeb he showed was that he was already so, he was okay. He was pretty it. consistent from that. You replaced those people with, I think at the time, Matt Clement. Mm -hmm. um, and you replaced that, it, yeah. I think, with David Wells at the time. Yep. So that move obviously wasn't there. Let's look at 2007. That's the year that Theo left in 2006's offseason, and you bring in Josh Beckett, and you bring in Mike Lowell. If Theo hadn't walked away from that, he probably wouldn't have parted with Hanley Ramirez at the time, so you probably don't win 2007's World Series without Josh Beckett and Mike Lowell. Mike Lowell was your 2007 MVP at the time. Yeah, yeah. 2013, you had a whole new cast of characters brought in, and... I mentioned that cast of characters as a positive. The Red Sox won in 2013 because they had an identity. They had team chemistry. They had a love of the game and a passion and care about each other. That was Cowboy Up, wasn't it? No, that was, that, 04. Too, that was 04. This was Mike yeah. Napoli, Shane Victorino. Everything's going to, yeah, yeah, um, that, uh, that every little thing going to be all right, yeah. that thing. But you brought in players that were gamers, that were winners, 
on and off the field. That wanted to win. That wanted yeah. to win and had a passion for it. Then after that, some players stayed, some, go, some went. Some had career years that year, and you re-signed Napoli, and you re-signed Gomes. Well, you end up releasing them from that. Evidence shows you that once you win something, you get attached to these players. It's a business. As much as we loved Evaldi, and as much as we loved Pierce and everything last year, you shouldn't have signed them. No, you should have re-signed Joe Kelly. Maybe not even him, though. Uh, but Maybe I, you, I, you, I had to, you had to replace them somehow. Mm. I'm not saying you needed to re-sign Kelly and Kimbrell and all these guys. Oh, I'm not saying re-sign Kimbrell. I'm saying re-sign Kelly. At least you have You, you have didn't another, replace you have in your bullpen yeah. 120 innings of, ba of baseballs that were pitched by these two gentlemen. You replaced them with Colton Brewer, Marcus Walden. Household names. The Pawtucket Red Sox Express Train. Yeah. You cannot win baseball games that way. That's why I would love my dream job, and I love what I do from everything with, with, with my sports zone and stuff. I would love to be a baseball executive because the moves that get made, you have to think smart. You can't think from your heart on these moves. You have to think what best sets your team up for success. And Dabrowski didn't do that. That is why he's no longer here. If Avaldi panned out, if Pierce panned out, if the bullpen was excellent and we're on our way to another postseason, you know what happens on Sunday? Nothing. Dombrowski's still here, and he's got another extension. So to say that Dombrowski came in and failed, you can't say that because he came in and did his job. Three American League East championships plus a World Series. That's my stance on the matter. Do you want to add on? Nope. <laughs> you want to add on? Yeah, I think David Welch was actually signed before they won. I think it was like 2000. Yeah, they signed him when he fell off the bar stool. Yeah. He, yeah. No, no, he... Uh, it's a true story. He no, didn't, yeah, he did. He, he, didn't had pitch a in that, he didn't pitch in that playoff, so... No, uh, he pitched in did the... He? Two, yes, he? he did. 2005, we played the White Sox. Oh, was he in that? Okay, so yeah, we yeah. did get swept in that. Yeah. America's of the yeah. year, and that's the year the White Sox won it. Yes, it is. Which is kind of nice. Yep. Uh, but no, yeah, I... Yeah, you can't. You got what you paid for. Yep. You got a championship out you of sure it. You sure did. And for the first time in I forget how many years, you won back to back American League East championships. You did. And you can't say, I mean, and he went through two or three managers. Uh, well, actually, did he go through three? Dombrowski fired Farrell, basically. Yep. And he brought in Cora. Yep. So Cora's here because of Dombrowski. Yeah. But was he here when Farrell was here? Uh, for, yeah, at the, at, for a season. A season. A yeah. season. Cora, he, Cora came in last year. Actually, no, won. two seasons. Yeah. Two seasons. So did he win? No, he didn't win under Zembrowski. Uh They won under Charrington? They that won it? under, in 2013, Ben Charrington. Okay. Yep. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's, it's, a whole, it's a stew, you know what I mean? And if you don't have players perform in a certain way, you don't have a man. I mean, I think Cora has been great. I think the players, you know, they might not have, not all of them, performed up to their potential and then also you can blame it on injury too this is an injury laden season i think just it was just a, a tornado or a perfect storm of like everything falling onto his plate and the, next the, the next executive the next exec guy. he is a fall guy he's a scapegoat but not to I say agree. he didn't he didn't deserve he, what he did yeah. you could take it either way either yeah, side sure. you could go with um to say that the next executive that comes in for the red sox has a tough job is an understatement do you think it's a younger guy or do you they have it's... a budget problem obviously financial troubles that they have a lot of big contracts they have a lot of big and... contracts coming up and big decisions that need to get made i saw a story that came out in the athletic it's a really good um uh, baseball and sports um online platform mm -hmm. and it was talking about Is that bill simmons um, the the athletic? Athletic, um that is run by ken rosenthal oh, ken rosenthal and that article was talking about how the Red Sox might actually be looking to cut their payroll significantly and may not have the money that they'd like to dish out to let J.D. walk, to let Mookie walk, to let all these things just go away so they can rebuild their farm system. That doesn't set you up for success. I mean, you can't do that here in Boston. We're, an, we're a, uh, a state, we're a community, a New England feel that... We want a championship, at least a playoff or something, as much as we can. Playoffs or, or World Series is, is on everybody's horizon each season. So the question will be, who is that person that's going to come back in? I have a personal feeling on what I think should happen. I don't know if it will or not, but I don't know if you have any, uh, any names that you'd like to float out there. I, 
I don't it's know. Very of, raw still. <clears throat> I don't know of any. Uh, Is it an internal or an external candidate? We'll make we'll break the question down a little bit um, easier for you, maybe to understand. Internal or external? Internal meaning that they will put somebody in place that is already in the system there or already a part of the organization? Or is it somebody that's outside the organization? Well, knowing, uh, knowing management and ownership, I, or I should say ownership, not management, um, I think it's going to be an external. You do? Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Phil? I don't know. I actually have no idea who yeah. they, they're... I mean, I would like to have... You're going to like this name. Oh, maybe. I was going to say, hopefully, it, it's someone who is younger and knows, uh, is kind of not the anti uh, Dombr uh, Dombrowski, but. Rumor has it. The good middle ground. There kind of is thing. trouble a brewing at Wrigley Field. Oh, I don't know if I do like this. I've heard this. I have heard a couple inklings that have saying that if this certain person is offered 2%, 2.5% ownership of the team, and total control, has all the rights to do whatever he'd like to do, this person would come back. And that name is Theo Epstein. Yeah. I like Theo, but I, I want him to help another team out, to be honest. You do? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, he... He already won his World Series with the Cubs. So I know. he's he got should, that. He, he, he go, is a Hall of Famer. Go to Detroit. Go to, uh, uh, go to the Angels. Go to... Uh, go to the Padres, actually. Go uh, go somewhere else. Go to the Rockies. I've heard he wants to come home. That's just yeah. a rumor that goes out there. Some other names. Uh, Mike Hasten, who used to be the assistant general manager and uh, GM at the time when Dombrowski was here. Yeah. Um, he's with Arizona Diamondbacks right now. He'd be a name that'd be on the radar for the Sox. Jason McLeod, name is off the, is off the radar. He was another person with Red Sox ties. He just got locked in long-term with the Cubs. That's why the Cubs situation... It, 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 they, it could happen. Yeah, yeah. It could happen. Um, the internal candidates, you have Eddie Romero, who is a, a amateur scout. Um, he is running, the, running it with um, uh, uh, Brian O'Halloran, who is the other name, too. So those are your guys of baseball ops right now. Um, just on a general, for our general sense, this is just going to be a, for an open discussion, open topic, and uh, question for the both of you before we wrap it up. If you were in the... If you had that, if you were of management and you were an executive that had to make a decision on what to do with the Sox coming forward, what would you do? Would you keep Mookie or would you keep J.D. Martinez? We'll go with you, Phil. I would gut it. Gut it? I, Let I, him walk? I, you know what? I love Mookie. And I think he's the face of your franchise for years to come. Yep. And there's a way you can get rid of uh, a lot of others and keep him happy, sure. But, I mean, I'm actually, I'm a fan of gutting it and starting it anew. I think the score shirts policy, because we're, we're too fat. You know what I mean? Fat and happy. Yeah. We're, I don't even know what happy. We're just we're fat not. Right we're not. Miser we're, miser we're miserable New Englanders. We're always going to, yeah, we're always going to be miserable. So, might as well, I mean, might as well build something interesting. And you know what? I like the journey sometimes. Color me kind of weird. Like the 2013 regard. team was cool because it was a bunch of new guys that just came in and won. Yeah. But I also love I love the the kids who came out Ben Attendee, uh, Betts, and uh, uh, Bradley Jr. I, I liked all that. I like Devers. I like this whole crop. But it's like I don't know. And some of them are still again. locked up. So yeah. you got Devers, think, you can yeah. build around Devers oh, and Bogarts. And Bogarts. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's you, true. you have Ben Attendee for a little bit. I think that that's somebody that might be traded between him or Jackie Bradley. Yeah. Uh, they're going to part with one of those. I know that for a proven fact. So oh, sorry, that'll be good. There. What do you think? JD or Mookie? Are you um, a JD person or a Mookie? <clears throat> I mean, if there was a if there was room for a choice, uh, I would I would choose um, I would choose to say adios to JD. Okay. Um, because like Phil said, I I feel Mookie is the next face of the franchise. But at the same time, I'm looking at the team this year. It, it could honestly be uh, Devers or Bogarts, really. Um, Good point. So I mean, I do I do agree with you where it would be kind of cool to see what they do if they do cut the entire team and keep a few of those guys, um, because it it is hard when you have a guy like Mookie and who knows how much he's going to ask for. But then again, I mean, it, there's been a history in Boston sports where you've had guys take a cut to just resign and be in the environment that they've been in, like Brady. Brady's taking cut after cut after cut after cut just to keep guys on. 
Mookie won't do that. I know that. I, I'm not saying. I'm not he saying he, he could will. Possibly. Mookie wants but the highest it, team, high, most money. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think Tom. I, I'm with Tom. Like, if the, there's that sliver of of hope, but also just, I don't know, the sake of enjoying that fantasy, that he'll, you know, that he might. But I'm with it. I probably. My move is. Sure. Um, I'm going to go different than the both of you here. You go um, JD. It's JD, and the reason that it's going to happen is JD's not going to opt out of his contract. He's 32. No yeah. other team needs a DH in the American League. I've done my research and homework oh, yeah. on that. He had three years left in his deal. It's three years, $66 million. The Red Sox will be trading Mookie Betts to the Atlanta Braves this offseason. Oh, That's wow. how we're going to close out today's show. That's on record. That's what's going to happen. Let's see what it does because I can predict the future. I can also predict that we will be back here <laughs> next time for another episode of Face the Facts. That's a proven fact right there. That is a proven <laughs> fact. A fact we have to Factual. Face. That's why we call this show... Face the facts. For Phil Healy and Tom Smith, I am Nick Face. Factually, we will see you next time on Face the Facts. Bye-bye.